BMW, the ultimate driving machine. There are certain logos that leave their mark on the minds of people. You can show little kid this symbol, the BMW logo, and they will instantly be able to name the brand. That is the kind of impact only certain brands are capable of. And today, we're going to talk about one of them, a multinational automobile company well known for its luxury sedans, Bayerische Motorin Werke, otherwise known as the Bavarian Motor Works. If you're new to the channel, welcome to Business Unmasked, where we unmask the stories behind interesting and successful companies. Hit the like button so more people can hear stories like these, and subscribe if you aren't already subscribed. Now let's get to the unmasking. BMW, or originally named Rapp Motorenwerke, was founded by Karl Rapp. The company didn't start manufacturing cars until years later. In fact, in the beginning, they solely produced aircraft engines for the German Air Force during the First World War. But after the Treaty of Versailles, Germany was no longer allowed to produce fighter jets, sending Rapp Motorenwerke in a downfall and shutting several of their factories down. For the next few years, the company manufactured motorcycle engines, farm equipment, household items, and railway brakes, slowly venturing out into motorcycles, producing its first ever BMW R32 in 1923. About five years later, they finally got into the automotive industry by purchasing Frashek Fabrik Eschnash and sold its first car, the BMW 315, which was just a modified Dixie car or Austin 7s from Britain. During the Second World War, BMW got back to producing aircraft engines for the last time, before their factories got heavily bombed and banned from producing any aircraft engines or motorcycles, sending them back to square one. But they didn't give up. They managed to keep the company alive by selling pots, pans, and bicycles. Slowly making its way back, BMW finally restarted motorcycle and car production in Bavaria by 1952 with the BMW 501 Luxury Saloon. By 1955, the company had a wide variety of options available for their customers. Initially, they tried to experiment its way into various segments of the market to cater to a wide range of customers. They would advertise a motorbike, an affordable microcar, the large prestigious diplomatic sedans, and exotic coupes, all in one brochure. They were banking on getting their target audience by seeing which category of cars would make the most amount of sales. Unfortunately, this tactic did not work well for BMW, as sales were slow on the luxury cars and they only earned a very tiny profit margin on the affordable microcars. It was so bad that they reached a point of bankruptcy and were nearly bought over by their rival company, Mercedes, in the year 1959. Quick question, please drop a comment down below and tell us which team you are on by typing in hashtag team BMW or hashtag team Mercedes. Now, getting back to the story, a large investment in BMW by Herbert Quant and Harold Quant saved the company, keeping them as a separate entity. So, hashtag Team BMW knows who to thank. BMW then launched their next car, the BMW 700, a small rear-engine car which later had various more models from August 1959 to November 1965. It was the first BMW automobile with a monocoque structure. This car was an immediate success that slowly helped the company recover. BMW was able to flourish through the 1960s and 1970s. The company focused on expansion as well as advancement throughout the period. Several of the modern arms of the company were also formed during this time. This period of growth resulted in the multifaceted organization that BMW is today. The 1970s also saw a period of international expansion for BMW. In 1972, the company began work on its first ever overseas production plant. That year was a big year for BMW. They also launched their BMW Motorsport subsidiary, which brought a lot of recognition and fame for the manufacturing quality and power of their vehicles. 
The success of BMW Motorsport influenced the company's new direction into building sports vehicles for the average driver. They had started work on the BMW complex in Munich in 1970. The building was structured to look like a four-cylinder engine and the project got completed by 1973. This building soon became an iconic part of Munich skyline. Over time, BMW was well known for both their luxury and technology. Their cars were always trying to find new ways to make the driver and the passengers have the most comfortable and luxurious experience. BMW became known for the extensive amount of research that went into designing and producing new vehicles. In 1990, BMW opened its Research and Innovation Center in Munich, making them the first car manufacturer to ever do so. The facility continues to host over 7,000 employees to date. BMW relies on a variety of scientists, designers, engineers, managers, and technical staff to work together to create their modern luxury vehicles. As a part of expanding, BMW also started manufacturing cars in the US in 1994. The plant was built in Spartanburg, South Carolina and was initially the dedicated production facility of the Z3 Roadster. The company later purchased the Range Rover Group in 1994. However, the takeover was not successful, proving to cause many large financial losses. In the year 2000, BMW sold off most of Rover brands but kept the Mini brand. In between it all, BMW also acquired the rights to the Rolls-Royce brand from Vickers PLC in 1998. For the new millennium, BMW wanted to focus on growth, change, and longevity. The move towards a fully global reach has continued into the 2000s as BMW opened up not one but three new production plants. The Rolls-Royce plant opened in Goodwood in 2003, followed by a brand new facility in Shenyang, China. BMW also opened another plant at home, the Leipzig plant, which is not only considered a creator of art, but a work of art itself, earning a German architecture award the year after it opened. After having spoken so much about the history of the company, I'm sure you all are dying to know more about its iconic logo. Well, when the name BMW was first included in the commercial register in July 1917, there was no company logo. So when the first ad came out that same month, it lacked any symbol or emblem. It was only months later on October 5th, 1917 that the young firm presented a logo. The first badge had a circular blue and white BMW logo evolved from the Rapp Mortenberg company logo, which featured a black ring bearing the company name surrounding the company logo. They also made sure to represent Bavaria, incorporating the state colors white and blue into the quarters of the inner circle on the BMW badge. Personally, I believe that the BMW logo depicts a rotating propeller and I wasn't alone. But how did that come to be? Well, the myth of the BMW propeller came about years after the first company logo. A company ad from 1929 showed an airplane with the BMW logo in the rotating propeller. The ad was trying to promote a new aircraft engine that BMW was building. The image underlined the company's roots and expertise in aircraft construction, and that interpretation passed on decades later. Over the last 100 years, BMW has transformed from a struggling airplane engine company to being the manufacturer of some of the most highly coveted luxury vehicles in the world. The company has witnessed some of the darkest times in European history, but has emerged as a strong, stable representative of quality German design and engineering. If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. It does wonders for the YouTube algorithm, so more people can see our videos and so that you can be notified when we launch our next video. We try and put out at least one new one per week, and as you can imagine, the research and editing alone of these type of videos takes us close to 18 hours. So we would really appreciate it if you could also check out our Patreon. For just $1 a month, you can support our work. We produce over 12 videos per month, so that is literally 8 cents per video. Thank you so much and we'll see you at our next unmasking.